John 3, 3 and 16. We do once again honor, thank God for our ecclesia. Amen. Amen. Our ministerial staff. Amen. Thank God for the saints of the most high God. We thank God for each and every one of you. John 3, 16, John writes, he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life for God so loved the world that he gave his his love was demonstrated through his giving God so loved the world that he gave the new living translation reads like this for this is how God loved the world for this is how God loved the world he gave his one and only son he gave his one and only son this is how God demonstrated his love towards you and I he gave his one and only he didn't have one to select from there wasn't a selection that he can choose from we choose the middle son we choose the only son and we choose the youngest son no the scripture says he gave his only one son that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life or for God loved the world so much he gave <laughs> he loved the world his love was demonstrated through his giving I, I want to continue to teach from the theme that we've been talking that we've been teaching from and that is the spirit of generosity as you take your seats just turn to your neighbor and say I have the spirit of generosity. Come on, turn to somebody else and say, I am generous. I, I know I don't look like it, but I am generous. <laughs> Come on, turn to your neighbor again and say, I am generous. Come on, turn to somebody else and tell them, I am a giver and I am a sower. Now, when we look at the gospel according to John, chapter number three, we all know this scripture in verse 16. We all know this scripture as a very familiar scripture. The world knows the scripture for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And we understand when looking at the scripture, we all understand, hopefully, we understand that the primary purpose or the primary application of this scripture is to reveal to us that Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. It's, it's, it's very clear in the scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It's very clear to us through this scripture that God is the only way to heaven. That there's no other way by which man can be saved. There's no other name that's above or beneath heaven where man can be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. So look at that, John 3.16 that's very clear. Whosoever believes, whoever, whosoever continues to believe on him shall have everlasting life. So it's clear when we look at this scripture, it's clear to see that Jesus is the channel to salvation. He's the way. It's not Elijah Muhammad. He is the way. He, he is the channel. He is the only way to salvation. He's the only way. It's through his blood. Are y'all hearing me? Only. Come on. He, he, uh, only through his blood only. can you get to heaven. Right. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. 
So, so it's clear, it's clear that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So, so it's clear that when you look at this scripture, you see that he is the way to salvation. He is the way. Turn to your neighbor and tell him he is the way. Come on, turn to somebody else and just evangelize for a minute and tell him he is the way. Say, if you want to see God, you have to receive him. Come on, turn to him and evangelize again. Come on, turn to him and tell him if you really want to see God, you have to receive him. So, so it's clear in John 3, 16 that he is the only way to God. He is the only way to receive everlasting life. And many times we look at that scripture and that's the only thing we pull out of that scripture. That God is the way. Jesus is the way. And that's fine because that's very important. That's very imperative that we understand that. That's very imper imperative that we receive that. And that's very imperative that we believe that. But that's not the only principle in that scripture. When, when you look at that scripture, when you look at John 3, 16, it's important for, under, for us to understand that there are other, or at least I see one other principle that we can pull from that scripture. When, when we look at it, one, yes, we see that Jesus is the channel to salvation. But, but, it, but the scripture doesn't only reveal him as the channel or doesn't only reveal that Jesus is the channel to salvation, but it also reveals the characteristic traits of God as a giver. It, it not only speaks to us about Jesus being the only way, but it also reveals God as a giver. It also reveals God as a sower. It shows us that God demonstrated his love through giving. He loved, he gave. Because God so loved the world that he gave. So many times we jump right to the latter end of that scripture and we bypass the beginning of it. You cannot bypass the genesis of that scripture and just jump right to the end and talk about everlasting life. We jump right to the fact that, yes, Jesus was the seed that was sown into the earth. And without no seed, there is sal there's no salvation. Are y'all hearing me? If there was no seed sown into the earth, there would be no salvation for you and I. Are you with me? Without no seed, there is no salvation. And we rejoice over that, and we should rejoice over that. But it's important for us to understand that if there was no sower of the seed, The seed had to be sown. And a lot of times we put a lot of emphasis on Jesus being the seed that was sown into the ground. And that's good, but understand, there had to be someone to sow the seed. And that someone had to have enough love for us to sow the seed. Because once again, Sowing or giving demonstrates the love that he has for us. Giving demonstrates love. Sacrifice demonstrates love. Are y'all hearing me? When you look at that scripture and we say that God gave, that word gave can also be translated to he sacrificed. His only, his only, his only. God sacrificed his only begotten son. He gave everything that he had. God gave everything. So when we look at the scripture, when we look at this particular scripture, and we look throughout scripture, we see that God is a generous God. He gives. Somebody say, God is generous. God is generous. Come on, talk back to me. Say, God is good. It's generous. God and, and I talked with you last week and I told you how if we even try to analyze, if we even try to calculate how much God gives, it is mind blowing. It's mind blowing. If you try to gauge how much God gives, it's, it's impossible for us to calculate. It's impossible for us to put numbers together. 
to come up with a, a number that says this is how much God gives. It's impossible for us to calculate. It's impossible for us to gauge how much God gives. Because when we look at how much God gives, and I talked with you last week, and I told you how he gives light, how he gives bread to the hungry, how he gives seed to the sower. Are y'all hearing me? He gives water to the thirsty. He gives us, even if we look at the last minute, if we look at the last minute of our life, the last minute, not the last year, if we go back to the last minute, just the last minute, you cannot calculate everything that God has given you within the last minute of your life. When you look at, when you look at the oxygen that you took, when you look at within the last minute, your eyes blink so many times. God gave you that. You, you, the oxygen that came into your body, God gave you that. The blood that's running warm through your vein, God gave you that within the last minute. The last minute, your heart pumps so many times. The, within the last minute, I'm talking about within the last. I'm not even talking about over the rest of your life. I'm talking about one minute. We cannot calculate how generous God has been to us. One minute. One minute. Try it. One minute. One minute. God right now is causing the trees to give off oxygen. Oxygen flowing through the airway so that you can receive the oxygen. God gave you that. Glory to God. The ability to be able to look and see. I know the things we take for granted. The ability that we can see. The ability that we can look at this screen and actually see what's on this screen. God gave you that. The ability that you have a mind. That you have a mind. That you have a mind to think. That you have a mind to think. God gave you that. Some of you, you don't even realize, but the last time you swallowed. God gave you the ability to swallow. And sometimes we look over these small things, but if you go into the hospital, you see folk with tubes down their throat. You don't even realize it's God that gave you that, the generosity of God. How good God has been and generous that how God has been to us. We swallow, we swallow, but then think, watch this thing. Think of the spit, the spit that you swallow, God gave you that. He gave you the glands to be able to... Y'all ain't, ain't ready for that. To be able to, God gave you that. He is a generous, he's a generous, he's a generous. We can't even calculate. When I, when I look in my hand, when I look in my hand, when I look in my arms, he gave me the activities of my limbs. Even as I'm moving my hand, he gave me the activities. He gave me the activities. He gave me my arm. He gave me my, not just the activities, but he gave me my arm to have the activities of my limbs. And then once again, I turn around and I look at my hand. Whoa, I have a hand. God gave me that. And then with, um, within my hand, God gave me fingers. Five fingers, five fingers, five fingers, four fingers, and a thumb. God gave me that. The activities, and then I have fingerprints. God gave me my own fingerprints. God, God is a generous. He's a generous. He is a generous. You can't even think. The last minute, I want you to try and think. Try to calculate. Try to gauge what God has done for you within the last minute. I'm not even challenging you to look over your life. I'm not even challenging you to look over the last year. I'm talking about the last minute. As a matter of fact, I'll break it down. I'll make it easier for you. The last second. Let's go back to the last second. If you look at the last second, you still can't calculate everything that God has done within the last second for you. The last second. Look at the love of God. Look at the generosity of God. How generous God has been to you within the last second. Everything. He is. He's a generous. He's a generous. He is a generous. God, he is a giver. He gave. It's only, it's only God so loved that he gave. It's only the simple fact that you're able to sit up here and be able to articulate what I'm saying. God gave you the ability to articulate the ability to receive, the ability to, 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 to understand what I'm saying. God gave you that. God is so generous. He, he is so generous. He reigns on the just as well as the unjust. So watch this. He doesn't even look at your goodness and decide how good he's going to be to you. Even if you're unjust, God is still generous. <laughs> even, 
Even if you even if you are the rank sinner, God is still generous. Because it's not predicated upon your love to him. <laughs> it's, it's predicated upon his love towards us. <laughs> The generosity. We can learn so much out of John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he was so generous to give everything that he had. Everything. Everything that God has. The earth is the Lord. The scripture says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all they that dwell therein. Everything that dwells within it is God's. In Genesis chapter number one, he told Abraham, he told um, um, Adam, he said, I want you to tell, he said, everything, he said, I'm giving this to you. The earth is the Lord's and the foot is there. Then he said, I want you to take dominion. He said, I'm going to leave this earth to you. Look at the generosity of God. He said, I'm going to give it to you. So if, if you ever come into a time where it doesn't seem like you can get, he said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. It belongs to you. <laughs> it belongs to you because I'm a generous God. I'm giving it to you. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, look at the generosity of God. Yeah. Say, say, God is generous. God is For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He is a generous God. So like I said, if we look at the last minute, the last second, we cannot calculate, we cannot gauge. Now when we look at, we, we look at the last year, you know, every year we receive um, W-2s. So, so we can gauge our giving. We can. Every year you receive a W-2. And within that W-2, it shows you how much you gave to the United States of America. We can, we can calculate your giving, my giving. <laughs> we see how much we gave to the state, and if you're part of this ministry, and if you have sown into this ministry, you will also receive um, a, a, a thank you a statement to shows that, that shows how much you've given into this ministry. Amen. Amen. Cal we calculate, and it's not that we're looking, but you, we're looking at what you give but it's for your benefit so that you can use it with your W-2. So that around March, you'll be shouting like you. <laughs> so, you so you can dance like you want, like you want to dance. But when it comes to God, once again, I, I tell you, this is so mind-blowing to me. And when it comes to God, we can calculate the last minute. The last second. And watch this. It is God's divine will. We see the generosity of God. We see this characteristic trait that God is a giving God, that God is generous. And it is the divine will of God for us, the people of God, to take on that same characteristic trait. Just as God is generous. It is the will of God for us the people of God, to be generous. Oh, I lost my amens right there. Y'all were shouting me down a few minutes ago. It's, it's, the, it's the will of God. I done lost the church. It's the will of God for us to take on that same trait because we want, we want to be like him, right? Come on, talk back. Y'all was loud a minute. Whoa, y'all were loud a minute ago. We want to be like him, right? Come on, not just walk in power, not just lay hands on the sick and watch them recover, not just speaking in another tongue, but we also want, want to be generous. Yeah. We want to be a generous people. We want to give. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I was telling God just this week, I was saying, God, I want you to use me to fund the kingdom. I, I, I want, that, that's what I told God. I, I want you, I want to become so generous as it relates to the kingdom. If you give it to me, I'll be that channel to fund the kingdom. Just like Jesus was that channel to salvation, I want to be that channel to fund the kingdom. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, me too. me too. Come on, say it again. Say, me too. Me too. The scripture says he gives seed to the sower. Right. So, so if I want God to use me to fund the kingdom, then I have to be 
a sower. God was a sower and still is a sower. He sowed his son. And when I'm saying sowed, I'm talking S-O-W-E-D. He sowed his son as a seed. Somebody say, I am a giver. I am a giver. Let, let us, let, let's um, allow our fingers to do some walking. Let's look at some scripture here. Let's look at Luke chapter number six. Let's go back here. We looked here last week, but I want to revisit some scriptures. Luke chapter number six. Luke 6 and 38. And, and I thank God for the tablets and all of that, but I tell you, there's nothing like turning them pages. Amen. There's nothing like looking in your Bible and seeing the font in red yeah. because you know that Jesus is talking here. And, and even though the whole word of God is God, amen, it's, it's the manifestation of God, it is the word of God, but it's something when you know that Jesus was standing here on the earth and teaching it's something when you know that he, these are the words that were uttered, uttered out of his mouth yes. Luke chapter number 6 Jesus is teaching <clears throat> he's teaching here in verse number 38 and he starts off he says give he says give and it shall be given unto you so Jesus is speaking. He said, give. Now, this word give in the Greek, the Greek word is denomo, or denomi, which simply means when he says give, it means to minister. So giving is a form of ministry. When you give, you're ministering to the kingdom. You're ministering to God. If you give into the kingdom, if you give it to the church, you're ministering to God. It's a form of giving. When you give to a person, you're ministering to that person. When you give, some, uh, give them a gift, it makes them happy. That's a form of ministry. It changed sometimes their disposition. It changed how they feel. Are y'all hearing me? When you give them a gift, we just celebrated Christmas. We saw the children. When we give, gave them gift, we saw them smile. We saw them laugh. We seen all kind of, all kind of emotions, all kind of great emotions. Why? Because we ministered to them. Amen. Giving is a form of ministry. Amen. So the Greek word is dynamo, which means to minister. It means to bestow. It means to give power. So when you give you're giving power. Yeah. He says give also means to position yourself. So when he says give, it means to position yourself to prosper. So every time you give, every time you sow into the kingdom, what you're doing is you're positioning yourself for prosperity. Amen. Every time you give, because every time you sow a seed, the scripture says whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's called the law of reciprocity. That is a law that God has established here in the earth. Whenever seed is sown, whenever you give, it has to come back to you. Yeah. That's why it's important that you don't say evil things about people because if you sow evilness, evilness is going to come back. Yeah. And if you do people wrong, wrong is going to come back. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So Jesus says, give and it shall be given unto you. So the Greek word is give. Now when you look at it in the Greek, give as it relates to humanity, as it relates to mankind, as it relates to us giving, it means once again to minister. And I taught you this last week, but, but when you look at it from God's standpoint, when God gives, there's a, different, um, there's a different meaning. When you look at it in the Hebrew or Hebraically, now Old Testament is Hebrew, New Testament is Greek. Are y'all hearing me? Old Testament Hebrew, New Testament Greek. So when you see God in the Hebrew or in the Old Testament talk about giving, is there's, a def there's a different definition. Are y'all hearing me? When you hear God tell Abram that he's going to give to his seed and he's going to give them the land and he's going to give. When you hear God say give, it means something totally different. It doesn't mean to minister. It means when God said he's going to give, it means to perform. It means to perform. So when God said, I'm going to give, God said, I'm going to perform that thing. He said, I'm going to perform. It also means to pay. It means to repay. Are y'all hearing me? I, I like God's definition. It, it means to repay. It means, watch this, it means to pour out. 
I mean, that God is going to pour out. So when God said, I'm going to give, giving it shall be given unto you, good measure, press it down, shaking it again. God said, I'm going to pour out. You see over in Malachi chapter 3, God said, I will open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out. I will pour you out blessing that you have not room enough to receive. Right. So when every time you sow, God said, okay, because you've sown, I have to reciprocate. I have to turn around and sow because I placed a law in the earth and it is the law of reciprocity and I'm not going to go against the law that I placed in the earth. If you sow an acorn, you're going to reap a tree. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. When a farmer sows and he goes out and he sows seed into his vineyard, he comes back at, another, at the next season and he comes with expectation, knowing that he sold. Yes. 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 Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Knowing that I sold into this ground, so I come back with the expectation, knowing that a harvest is going to come. Amen. God says, when you sow, I'm going to pour on your seed now watch this the seed that goes into the ground is much smaller than the harvest that comes up out of it see see we're the harvest that god sowed into the ground god sowed jesus as the one seed the only seed and because of that one seed, there are billions upon billions throughout the years and the eons of time. We're still seeing the harvest of the one seed. And, and you struggling with sowing the one seed. A seed that is not sown is a seed that will not grow. You, if you don't sow the seed, you can't reap the harvest. If, if, if I hold on to my seed and I don't put the seed in the soil, how can I go out and look for harvest? See, as some of us, we, we, we struggle with sowing seed, and this is why God is talking to us. And watch this. God is not trying to get anything from you. Let me make this clear. The kingdom is not struggling. The kingdom, ain't, the kingdom is not broke and needs you to come and rescue it. And that's sometimes the mentality that we take on. Amen. Like they try to get, listen, the kingdom ain't struggling. God ain't struggling. The kingdom, the kingdom ain't broke. So God is not trying to get anything from you. The scripture says that the king's heart is in God's hand. God will call somebody over in Africa if there's a need here and you don't want to supply the need that's here. He's been talking to you to help supply the need here. God will go all the way to Africa. I need you to wire some money. I don't, all of a sudden they wake up in the middle of the night. I don't know why this church is in my spirit. God will touch a billionaire and say, I don't know why. Talk, touch a billionaire and say, I don't know why I'm going to do something for this ministry. I've been, I've been watching them all. I've been watching them on Facebook. You out there? I've been watching them. I'm, we're camera. I've been watching them on Facebook and YouTube. And I know you out there. Come on, if that's you, come on, release the seed and watch God give you a harvest. Come on, somebody clap your hands in this house. So he says, he says, give and it shall be given unto you good measure press down shaking together and running over God said he'll cause men to give he'll cause men to give he'll cause men to give unto your bosom when you give see and this is why the devil fights you so much he don't want you to give God start talking to you about giving God start telling you what you need to sow God start you know in your sleep he start dealing with you in your dreams he start showing you the money that you need to sow into the kingdom and then all of a sudden, you know, that devil coming in, you start telling you, you know, that, that ain't God. You know, you ate that piece and you went to, you know, you went to bed and, you know, that's not, that's not God telling you to give. Well, it's definitely not you. <laughs> you know, the devil ain't going to tell you to sow. 
Okay, let me come to this side of the church. The, the enemy ain't going to tell you to sow because he knows that if you start giving, if you start sowing, there is a harvest that comes from the seed. He know that when you give, he knows that it opens up the heavens above your head. Yes. And God said, I'll pour you out a blessing that you have not room enough to receive. He said, you won't even have room to receive. Your harvest will be so big, you won't have room enough to store it. Your harvest will be so big. I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe this for me. Your harvest will be so big until you need more than one bank account to store it. Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? Because of the seed, he says, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God said he'll cause men to give unto your bosom. Let me deal with something really quick right here, real quick. And it's a lie that comes from the enemy. And he have us to think that, you know, we ought not talk about money in church. That's, what he said. That, that's a trick of the enemy. That's a trick of the enemy. Because when you look at the scripture, the scripture talks about money over 800 times. Over 11 times, Jesus talks about it. Jesus talks about the treasure. Jesus talks about money. And not one time is poverty, not one time out of the over 800 times, not one time is poverty seen as a blessing. So where we get that from, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe we're, we're looking at the Pope. I don't know, but it's not here in the scripture. Because when you look at the scripture, the scripture talks about abundance. The scripture talks about the blessing. Are y'all hearing me? So watch this. Let's go real quick. Let me show you in scripture. That's right. Let's go to Proverbs. My wife helping me preach. She said, not the vile poverty. Poverty. Uh, Proverbs chapter number three. Proverbs chapter number three, verse number nine and 10. Solomon is writing here. He says, honor the Lord with your substance. Honor the Lord. That word honor Hebraically is the word, it simply means to glorify. Honor, to glorify the Lord with your substance. Glorify the Lord with your substance. It also means to bring, to honor, to bring. To bring to honor, to glorify, glorify the Lord with your substance, with your substance, glorify the Lord. And that word Lord there Hebraically is Rahova, which is the self-existing eternal God. So he says, honor the Lord, honor the self-existing eternal God. He said, with your substance. It's, it's good that we worship him. That's great. And we ought to continue to worship him. That's primary. We ought to worship. We are worshipers. Somebody say, I am a worshiper. But you know that lifted up your hands is not your only form of worship. Opening up our mouths is not our only form of worship. There are many forms of worship, and one other one, or one is honoring or giving to God. So he says, honor the Lord with your substance. So he's very clear on how we're to honor God here in this scripture. He tells us we ought to honor him with our substance. Yes. We ought to give to the kingdom. We ought to sow to the kingdom. Amen. He says, and with the first fruit with the first fruit, right off the top, with the first fruit. I mean, if, if we just follow this one scripture, we, we're, we're without excuse. That we can't come to God and say, I didn't have it. Yeah. Come on. Because if we take it right off the top, like we're supposed to, we, we, can't have, we wouldn't have that excuse that I don't have it. Because we, sure we sure not going to the IRS talking about they ain't, we ain't got it because they're taking theirs right off the top. Before you see your check, they already got it. But God said, I'm going to trust you to do the right thing. And to honor me with your substance. Because if I just take it off the top, then it's not, I'm not giving you the opportunity to honor me. Amen. So God said, I'm giving you the opportunity to honor me. I'm giving you the opportunity to show your love, express your love towards me. Jesus. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. So he said, I'll give you, I'll give you the hundred. I'll give it to you, but I need you right off the top to honor me. Jesus. To put me first, to put me uno. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. So he says, honor the Lord with your substance. And with the first fruit of your increase, so every increase, every time you get paid, every time you get money, give to God. Yes, yes. Listen, you cannot beat God giving. Yes. 
I told y'all how much she how much she gives. We can't even calculate how much she gives. We cannot beat God giving, but watch this. It's fun trying. It is a blast trying to be God giving. I'm telling you, it's a blast. When you try to be God giving, you give that your seed. Then you go back. And then you come back looking for your harvest. And then you see God has took, uh, taken your seed and blew on it and poured out and caused an increase. And then you take from your increase and then you sow another seed. And then you come back because you know that God is true to his word. The scripture says that he not, he's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it, shall he not do it? Hath he spoken it, shall he not make it good? So if God said it, he's going to do it. If God said that this is a law that I have placed in the earth that whatever a man sow it that shall he also reap every time I sow a seed I have a harvest coming every time I sow I can expect a harvest to come from the seed and see the devil will have you to try to hold on you can you know you can't afford to give you know you can't afford you know you can't afford to do that you know, look at your light bill, look at your water bill, look at your gas bill, look at your, look at this bill. He'll bring up all your bills to you. He'll bring up all your struggles. He'll tell you where you are. You know you can't afford. He want to keep you in poverty. He want to keep you broke, busted, and disgusted. He want to keep you. He want to hold you in poverty. Are y'all hearing me? He want to hold you. The way out of poverty in the kingdom is to sow into the kingdom. The the stock's always falling. They're always up and down, up and down. But the kingdom is always. The kingdom is always. The kingdom is never struggling. Even when we went through that time in, of COVID, where we saw folk losing their jobs and everything, look, the kingdom was always. Are y'all hearing me? The kingdom is stable. The kingdom is not inconsistent. The kingdom is stable. He said, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said, this is my church. I'll uphold my church. Are y'all hearing me? So he says, honor the Lord with your, with, with, uh, with your substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. He says, watch this. He said, if you do this, he said, your barns will be full of plenty. Yes. Yes. Look, at, look at the exchange. Yes. Look at the exchange that we have with God. He said, if you honor me with your substance, he said, I'll keep your barns full. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, he said, I'll, he said, if you honor me, he said, I'll keep your barns full. That, 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 is, that is beyond just enough. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> that, that is beyond just enough. He said, I'll keep them full. Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. He said, I'll keep them full with plenty. Yeah. He said, I'll keep your barns. Y'all got it over there. Look it. He said, I'll keep your barns. He said, your barns will be filled with plenty. <laughs> your barns. Yeah. And, and this particular time, the barns is where they kept their wealth. Their wealth. You know, the barns, the barns, the barns, the barns. The barns today is where we keep our money. Right. Savings accounts, bank accounts, 401k plans our savings. He said, I'll keep them filled with plenty. I'm not making this up. I'm not, I'm, I'm so glad they got the screens fixed so that y'all can see for yourselves. Watch this. He said, and your presses shall burst out with new wines. He said, your presses, he said, listen, I will cause an overflow because of a seed or because of the seed that you sow. Let's go real quick. Genesis chapter number 8, verse number 22. Genesis 8, 22. I feel a blessing coming on. I feel like harvest is around the corner. Glory to God. Somebody's about to turn that corner. Glory to God and bump into your harvest. I wish somebody would just receive that right there. Turn to your neighbor and tell them your harvest is here. Y'all ain't saying it right. Come on, turn to somebody else and tell them your harvest is here. 
Genesis 8 and 22. 8 and 22. Moses writes here, he says, as it relates to the seed, he says, while the earth remaineth, and it has an ETH, but simply based continually. As long as the earth is here, as long as the earth is here, look at this promise. He said, seed time, there will be seed time and harvest. Yes. There will be cold and heat. Uh -huh. There will be summer and winter. Yes. Day and night will not cease. Yes. He says, as long as the earth, look at the promise. And you know what's crazy about this one scripture? Is that the enemy will fight us over everything that is at the genesis of this scripture. Everything else, we believe. We don't struggle with any of this, but it's in the same scripture. <laughs> it's in the same scripture. We don't struggle with the fact that cold and heat, some of us, we start preparing for the cold. Our faith, we have faith in the fact that winter is coming. Even though we don't see it, we start going buying coats. We all at the coat factory in the long lines, Burlington Coat Factory. We, we start buying stuff because we're preparing for what is to come because we believe that as long as the earth is here, winter is coming. We start trying to rush home at night because you know you can't see on the freeway, so you have to hurry up and get home because you don't, you don't like driving at night. So you believe that night it's coming. I got to get home before they, but you believe you have faith that night has come. You believe everything in the scripture. But as it relates to seed time and harvest, huh, that's where the fight is. The devil don't fight you over the night and day. He doesn't fight you over the winter and summer because you know, you have faith that that's going to happen. How can you look at one scripture and have partial faith? How can you look at one scripture, the same scripture, and have faith that winter is coming, night is coming, day is coming, but not have faith the harvest is coming. Not have faith in seed time. When God is clear, he says, as long as the earth is here, it's going to happen. And I'm going to give you this day and night summer to help to elevate your faith. Because if you could have faith in that, I want you to have faith in this. Knowing that as long as the earth remains, that there's going to be seed time and harvest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let's go real quick. Exodus, I'm getting ready to close. Did I have one close yet? No. no I didn't. Okay, that's my first one. All right, y'all know I have three. I have three. I have three. That's, that's the first one. All right, and as we go to Exodus chapter number 35, let me tell you some truths about money. At least three. I'll give you three here. One, money motivates. Money motivates. The scripture says, Money answers all things. Now, let me just talk to you because, you know, sometimes people, like I said, we get a little tense when you start talking about money in church. But the scripture says money answers all things. Yes. Money answers those bill collectors. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. And I told y'all this before. The, the, the bill collectors are not calling for you. <laughs> they're not calling for you. I know, I know you think they are, but they're not calling for you. Show up without money and see how bad they want you. They're calling for money. And money will answer them. Money answers, the scripture says, all things. Now, the first truth about money is money motivates. Somebody say money motivates. Money motivates. Come on, say money, 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 motivates. money motivates. It motivates. And let, let me give you an example. Money motivates you to go to work. That's motivation. You getting up in the morning, going to that job, your money is your motivation. If you don't believe me, go and volunteer. Let, let them tell you that they're not paying you this week and let me see if you show up. 
money, <laughs> money <laughs> motivates. Are y'all hearing me? It motivates you to go to work. Let me tell you this other truth about money. Money magnifies. Money magnifies. What's ever in your heart, money will magnify it. If you are a giver, money will magnify it. Are y'all hearing me? If you are a giver, money will magnify that. You will give more because money magnifies. If you struggle with, with, let me try to say something nice. If you struggle with drug addiction, God forbid no one is struggling with that, but if someone who's struggling with drug addiction, money magnifies that because it takes money to help them or get that fix. Money magnifies that. So money is a magnifier. It magnifies whatever, what's ever going on in your heart. Are y'all hearing me? So it magnifies. And not only that, money must be properly managed. Money motivates, it magnifies, and it must be properly managed. And one week I'm going to come back and I'm going to really deal with those three points and teach on that and teach how important it is for us to, for us to understand how it motivates, how it magnifies, and how especially how we need to manage our money. Yes. Nope. Not no. <laughs> Exodus. <laughs> Exodus. Exodus chapter number 35. Watch this. Let's look at Moses. Let's look at Exodus chapter number 35. Now here when we look here, we see that the children of Israel, they have just come out of Egypt. And they're getting ready to transition. They're getting ready to go into their blessing. They're getting ready to step over. Or God is preparing them to get ready to go into their blessing. And we see here in Exodus chapter number 35, as they departed out of Egypt, we see that God speaks to Moses. He gives him divine instruction because God wants to dwell with the Israelites. God wants to dwell with the people. So he speaks to Moses and he commands Moses to speak to the people that they will build him a tabernacle. Watch this. It's almost parallel to where we are. Build him a tabernacle so that he can dwell in the midst of them. So he speaks to Moses. Moses go up to Mount Sinai and he come back down with a message from God. And the message is give. Watch this. Watch this. Let's start at verse number four. Can, can I get a reader? Somebody to read this. Who that? All right, go ahead. Can we get her a mic? Thank you. 35 and 4. And they gave unto Jacob. Are you at Exodus 35 and 4? Amen. Did I say the wrong one? Exodus 35 and 4. Amen. And Moses uh -huh. spake unto all the congregation. Now Moses is here. He's speaking to everybody in the congregation. Go ahead. Of the children of Israel. Uh-huh saying uh -huh. this is the thing which the Lord commanded. So he says listen this is what God has commanded me. I'd have been in the presence of the Lord. I've been up in Mount Sinai. His face is shining like a hundred suns. The people looking at him and they see his face got this glow on it. He's standing before them and he's telling them. He says this is what God has commanded me. I've been in God's presence and God has given us divine instruction. Go ahead. Saying. Uh huh. Take ye the take ye from among you uh -huh. an offering unto the Lord. He said, "Take an offering unto the Lord." Go ahead. Whosoever uh -huh. is of a willing heart. Now watch this. He didn't put any pressure on anybody. He said, "Whosoever is of a willing heart." And this is why God is speaking to us about generosity, because God is not going to turn our arms, twist our arms, so that uh, so that we would give to Him. So he says, whosoever is of a willing heart, whosoever has the spirit of generosity, whoever, whosoever is generous, whosoever have this DNA of the father going through the blood running through their veins, whosoever, he's not talking to those that are stingy, those that are tight. He said, whosoever, the whole congregation is there, but he's dividing them. He's saying, whoever, whoever, is of a willing heart. I'm not going to toil with you, and I'm not going to sit back and try to explain and all of this. I'm not doing all that. He said, whosoever is willing. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, whosoever is of a willing heart. Go ahead. 
let him bring it. Uh huh. An offering of the Lord. He said, whosoever willing, he said, let him bring an offering unto the Lord. He said, this is what God has told me to tell you. Go ahead. Gold and silver. He said, watch this. He, he is specific because God is specific as it relates to his house where he dwells. He said, I want you to bring gold and silver. Go ahead. And brass. He said, and brass. And blue. Uh-huh. And purple. Blue and purple. He's very specific even with the colors, colors of royalty. Go ahead. And scarlet. Uh-huh. And fine linen. Go ahead. And goat's hair. He's, go ahead. And ram skin. Go ahead. Dyed red. Mm -hmm. And badger skin. Uh-huh. And shittim wood. So he's very specific once again on what he wants. He's very specific. He's telling them exactly what to bring. Are y'all here? He didn't tell them just go and get whatever you feel like getting, whatever you feel like bringing, yeah. bring it. He's very specific because he knows how he wants his house. He said, this is where I'm going to dwell. This is where I'm going to live. This is where I'm going to abide. And this is how I want my house to look. Go ahead. And oil uh -huh. for the light. Oil for the light. Go ahead. And spices for anointing oil. He said, and I want you to bring spices for the anointing oil. Go ahead. And for the sweet incense. He said, listen, he told enough to prepare this place because I'm getting ready to dwell among you. Amen. He said, get this place ready because I'm getting ready to show up and I'm getting ready to show up. I'm getting ready to dwell among you all like you've never seen. I know you came up out of Egypt and you seen me split the Red Sea, but I'm getting ready to step down in the midst of you and dwell in the midst of you. And when you come into the tabernacle, that's going to be a radical change that's going to happen in you because you're going to come in and you're going to feel my presence. He said, I want you to prepare a place for me to dwell. Go ahead. And onyx stones uh -huh. and stones Go to ahead. be set for the ephod. Go to verse number, um, where you at? You're at verse nine? Nine. Go ahead, keep going. And for the breastplate. And for the breastplate, jump down to verse 20. And all the congregation uh -huh. of the children of Israel uh -huh. departed from the presence of Moses. The people heard the word and they departed and went their way. Go ahead. And they came everyone whose heart stirred him up. They said, listen, they, they heard the word. They heard what God told Moses to tell them. They went, they left Moses. They left the presence of Moses and they were stirred. Somebody say, I'm stirred. Come on now. They kind of quiet over here. Let me see that. Come on. Somebody say, I'm stirred. I'm stirred. I like this side. I believe this side could get better. Come on. Somebody say, I'm stirred. I'm stirred. I'm stirred. Let the congregation shout, I'm stirred. I'm stirred. They left and they were stirred by the word. They were stirred by him challenging them to give. They were so stirred that they went into their houses. Watch this. Go ahead, read. And everyone whom his spirit made willing. Read that from the beginning again. And they came. Uh -huh. Everyone whose heart stirred him up. They said their heart was stirred up. Go ahead. And everyone uh -huh. whom his spirit made willing. So everybody who had a willing spirit, they were stirred and they were willing. And I could even add to that, they were stirred, willing, and ready. They were stirred, willing, and ready to do what God has told them to do. God said, listen, we're getting ready to build the tabernacle. But I need y'all to be generous in your giving. We're getting ready to build the tabernacle. And when they left, they were stirred and they had a willing heart. They said, God, whatever you want me to do, whatever you need of me, let's do this. I want to partner with you, God. <laughs> Turn to somebody and say, I'm getting ready to partner with God. And God is getting ready to partner with me. Watch this. Go ahead. And they brought the Lord's offering. They, they went and they, they went into their houses. They came back and they brought the Lord an offering. Go ahead. To the work. Of the tabernacle they, of the congregation. They bought it for the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. Go ahead. And for all his service. Uh-huh. And for the holy garment. Go ahead. They bought it for the service. They bought the stuff for the garments, for the priest to wear. All the onyx and all them stones. They bought it for the priest. They said the priest is going to be dressed like he's supposed to be dressed. Everything is going to represent the spirit of excellence. We're not just going to throw something together and, and, and want God to come in it. It's going to be in the spirit of excellence. Everything that God wants, we're going to. Everything that God wants, we're going to give it to him. Are y'all hear me? And when God step in a house, he's going to step into a house of excellence. 
Turn to your neighbor and say, we're not just throwing something together. We're not just throwing something together. We're not throwing it together. We're not throwing it together. It's going to be, it's going to present the kingdom. It's going to be in the spirit of excellence. Go ahead. And they came. Uh Uh-huh. Both men and women. He said, watch this. He said, they came. And what I love about this is that, you know, in scriptures, I kind of laughed at this when I read it because, you know, when you look at scripture, a lot of times it just talks about the man. It talks about the man. Very seldom does it talk about about the woman. But as it relates to giving right here, he said both the man and the woman, (laughs) both the men and the women came, both of them. They came, they were stirred. Not just the men were stirred, but the women. They got stirred. Not just the husbands were stirred, but the wives. They got with their husbands. The husbands got with their wives. And they said they went into their own homes and they said, listen, God has given us a command. We need to do what it takes so that we can meet the need that the kingdom has. Y'all ain't talking back to me. They, they got, they were stirred. The single women went, they said, you know what? I don't need a husband. I got God. And God is going to help me to do what I need to do so that I won't stand out as one that didn't participate. <laughs> he said that with the men and the women, they were stirred. The church was stirred and ready to build. Go ahead. Y'all could tell I was so excited when I was reading this. I was looking at this like, God, you talking. All right, go ahead. As many as were willing hearted uh-huh. and brought bracelets and earrings <laughs> was and rings and tablets. The folk was bringing. They were giving. I y'all say, the folk got so stirred until they went and they just started bringing stuff. They started giving. They started giving. They started giving bracelet, tablets, everything. They started giving onyx. They started giving all kinds. Shed them wood. They brought everything that God commanded. There was no shortage. And then one passage, it was so, until God had to tell Moses, had to tell him, look, y'all bring it so much, don't bring no more. That's a good problem to have. That's, that's a good problem to have. That God, that you bring so much and tell Moses, so you know what, y'all bring it too much. The barns are full. <laughs> the bar- we can't handle anymore <laughs> Ooh, we getting there we're going there i'm telling you i prophesy that we that's where we're headed somebody shout amen all right let's go all jewels of gold uh-huh. and every man that offered an offering of gold unto the lord uh-huh. and every man with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen uh-huh. and goat's hair and red skins of rams uh-huh. and badger skins brought them. Uh-huh. Everyone that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought the Lord's offering. And every man with whom was found shittim wood for any work of the service brought it. Uh-huh. And all the women that were wise hearted did spin with their hands. So the women who had wisdom, they, in, in other words, what are you talking about? The women, the women who knew how to make stuff. The women, the wise women, they start spinning with their hands. They start making stuff. We're getting this. We're going to do whatever it takes. We're going to do whatever it takes. We'll sew the curtains. We're going to do whatever it takes. We'll spin with our hands. We'll get there and we'll sit at the potter's wheel. And we'll make. We'll do whatever it takes. They begin to put the house of God. They begin to prioritize the house of God. As the most important thing in this season right now, this is the most important thing that we get this thing done. That we get this, I'll spend all night. I'll sew all night. I'll make it happen. All, if I got to work all night to make it happen, I'm going to do what I can do to make it happen. This is the women of wisdom. They begin to spin. They begin to make it happen. The men, they start bringing a shit of wood. They start bringing the stuff that were heavy. Are y'all hearing me? Go ahead. And if I had time, I can really deal with that shit of wood, but I'm going to, how it represents the Christ, but I, I ain't going to, I'm not going to mess with that because we can be here all night. Let's go. And brought that which they had spun, mm-hmm. both of blue mm-hmm. and of purple and of scarlet uh-huh. and of fine linen. Uh-huh. And all the women whose heart stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair. These women were stirred. Go ahead. 
And the rulers brought onyx stones uh -huh. and stones to be set for the ephod uh -huh. and for the breastplate. The leaders even got, they said, listen, we're going to bring the onyx stones. We're going to bring the um, stones that set for the breastplate. We're bringing the ephod and we, we're bringing, and we're bringing spices. Go ahead. Verse number 28. And spice uh -huh. and oil for the light. We're bringing the oil for the lights. Go ahead. And for the anointing oil. For the anointing oil. That is very important. Go ahead. And for the sweet incense. Go ahead. The children of Israel uh -huh. brought a willing offering. Wait a minute. Hold on. They brought a willing offering. They brought a willing offering. They brought a generous offering. They were willing to do what it take to get the assignment done. They brought a willing offering. Go ahead. Unto the Lord. They brought it unto the Lord. Go ahead. Every man. Every man. Go ahead. And woman. Uh-huh. And woman. Whose heart made them willing. Whose heart made them willing. And that's so important. And this is why God is talking to us about generosity. Because our hearts need to be changed. Some of us, our hearts need to be changed as it relates to giving. Yes, yes. Are y'all hearing me? Some of our hearts, we need to be more generous as it relates to giving. We need to be more generous. You have to have a willing heart. You cannot beat God giving. Are y'all hearing me? You cannot beat God giving. And I told y'all last week, I'm not after your money. My wife, she's not after your money. God is not after your money. Thank God he takes it. My, my harvest come from my seed that I sow. If I don't sow, if I don't give, if I don't tithe, then I bring on a, a challenge for my finances. Are y'all hearing me? Scripture says you're cursed with a curse. Are y'all hearing me? I'm not blessed by what people give. I'm blessed by my giving. So he said, you have to be generous. And this is why God is talking to us about generosity. Not so much about that he's trying to get a seed from you, but that he's trying to change your heart so that you can have the character of God, the character of Christ, so that we can be more like him in this area. Are y'all hearing me? Let's finish this. We're closing on this scripture here. Whose heart made them willing. Uh-huh. To bring for all manner of work, mm -hmm. which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. Made by the hand of Moses. You can close. We can close your Bibles right there. I did good. I closed that through at two instead of three. <laughs> Listen, saints, the Lord is he's talking to us. He's talking to us. We getting ready to transition. We're getting ready. We're getting ready to move. I'm excited. Are y'all excited? We're getting ready to transition. Glory to God. God is getting doing some great things for us. This is our season. This is our time. And to whom much is given, the scripture says, much is required. This is what we're sitting in right now is 2,000 square feet. We're moving from 2,000 square feet to over 7,000 square feet. We have offices. We have a cafeteria. I ain't gonna call it a kitchen. I'm gonna say a cafeteria, a lunch room. Are y'all hearing me? The women, you don't have to stand in line for the bathroom. There's what, four or five stalls, five stalls in the women's bathroom, which is already, I mean, it's already, the stones are already on the wall. So we're not asking you to bring stones. The stones are done. We have a place for children's church. A large room for children's church. We have three to three offices, three, four, three, three. I need to understand where I'm going. Three. We have three offices. I have my office, glory. My wife has her office, glory. Then we have a finance office, glory. Glory to God. The, the sound booth is going to be in the sanctuary. So we don't have to look all over in there trying to 
give them cues, stay right in the sanctuary in the back so they can see everything. Are y'all hearing me? Glory to God. We got all kind. Of, we're, getting, we, we're getting ready. All these perp, um, burgundy chairs, we're not having this color. Getting all new chairs. You sat in them chairs long enough. It's time for you to arise and go to another level. Glory to God. God is good. Are y'all excited about what God is getting ready to do? So this means that because God is doing much, so much more, much is going to, so much more is going to be required of me. We ask that that everyone that could and somebody can do more or could have done more, we ask that you would sow a thousand dollars, thousand dollar seed. And many of us, we we sown it, we sown it and more. And and God see that as a seed. And I prophesy that off that seed you shall reap your harvest. I prophesy it. I prophesy this is good ground. We're twenty five plus years old. God is going to give you your harvest from that seed. He's going to give you. And some of you, you probably say, you know what? I, 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 I want to give it. I, I dare you. If you, don't, if you don't have it, I dare you to start seeing it in your near future. I dare you to start speaking to yourself and speaking to your buddy and say, I'm sowing this seed. I'm, so, I'm going to sow this seed. Looking at my bank account, I don't have it, but I'm going to sow it. Elder Jeff said he's a witness, and you heard his wife share a couple weeks ago. She said, we didn't have it, but we purposed in our heart that we're going to sow it. And they said, a check, am I, am I telling it right? Oh, see, I wasn't going to tell how much I sold, but since you're going to put it out there, let's go ahead with it. Amen. They said, Amen. He said, he said, they both sold that thousand dollars he sold and his wife sold. They didn't know where it was gonna get it, but they purposed in their heart. You gotta hear them over there talking. They'd be like, honey bud, we go. <laughs> we gonna sell this honey bud. All right, sweetie cakes. They, you gotta hear. <laughs> Minister Militia, if you listening, if you watching, you know I'm telling the truth. But they purposed in their heart that they were going to do it. And God provided. Because they per the scripture says he gives seed to the sower. If God knows you purpose in your heart. God will cause the king's heart. The king's heart is in his head. He'll cause folks to say, I don't know why I give, why I'm giving to you, but I'm going to give. I'm going to cause it to happen. Are y'all hearing me? If you purpose in your heart that you're going to sow, my wife will, wait, come on, come on. <laughs> She's over here beating her up. We need, we need you on the camera because we need, come on, we need to hear. Come on. I just want to say the oneness of marriage is so important. That is incredibly important because he was not here when his wife made the commitment. And she said, me and my husband is going to sow. Look at the unity. He didn't come back and say, don't be saying, I'm going to sow. That's just you on this on you. No, it wasn't that. They understood oneness and unity. And because they came in agreement, God did it for them. So next week, she'll be preaching on oneness. <laughs> but it's so important, and that is true. That it, it is important to come into agreement and not just with married couples but if you are part of this ministry to come into agreement with this ministry we just saw it we just saw it right there in scripture we saw the people come into agreement they all came in agreement and they had a will at heart and they said we're going to do this and they came back with their seed they came back and sown and like I said if they sowed so much at one point to where Moses said don't bring another thing no more scarlets, no more shittim wood, no more onyx. Don't bring anything else because we have more than enough. <laughs>